Good morning everyone and welcome to our service today. It is Trinity Sunday and we're going to start by singing uh, a wonderful hymn of joy, number 65, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. Let us pray. God, creator of all the universe, we thank you for all that you have made, for land and sea, air, fire and light, all made the universe what it is, designed and ordered by your wisdom. We search its mysteries, rejoice in its beauty, revere in its joys and struggle to understand when it causes suffering. But without you, we would not exist and life would be nothing. God, Divine Son, Jesus, we thank you for all you have done, for your saving work on the cross, your resurrection and ascension, your mediation for our needs, your selfless love and obedience. We study your words, admire your deeds, follow your example, knowing we can never reach your perfection. But without you, we would be condemned to death and life would be nothing. O oh God, Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us, in us. We depend on your guidance, rely on your inspiration, seek your gifts and try to show your fruits. But without you, we would be empty and life would be nothing. Give, Give us, us good, good things, things, generous God, God so, so that, that we can truly live Christian lives and share you with our neighbours. Amen. Amen. That was a Trinitarian prayer, a prayer that started with God the Father, then went to Jesus Christ the Son and finished with God the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to have a prayer of confession. 
loving God, we pray to you today, asking for forgiveness for times when we have done things wrong, when we have said things that were unkind, when we have done the wrong thing and acted against what you would have desired. Forgive us, Lord, for not always standing up for the right thing. Help us, Lord, to promote justice in our world. Wipe the slate clean in our lives. And when we go from this act of worship today, may we go knowing that you are with us in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wonder what you can see this. This is an electric plug. And how many pins are there in the electric plugs? I'm sure you've seen this before. There's one, two, and three. And I wonder, do you know how many wires are there in the flex designed to carry a 13 amps? So let me just open that for you. So open the, and then in there, there are three wires. Let me pull them out. There are three wires. And I wonder whether you can see these three wires and what happens if one wire becomes disconnected? Well, basically the electrical appliance that you, the, this plug-in will stop working. The power will fail to get through and they stop working. What happened? Do you think if two of these wire bare wires touches. Well, you again, the electrical appliance would not work because they will fuse and short circuit. So each wire here, or each pin in this uh, plug is separate, and yet they are all important. Each an integral part of the one plug. Take away one, and the plug will either fail to work or be dangerously inadequate. And much the same is true when it comes to talk, talking about God and the doctrine of Trinity. Three in one and one in three. That's what we're told. The words which on the surface don't seem to make much sense. But just as a plug is composed of three wires, so God comprises three persons. To talk about God the Father without God the Son, or God the Son without God the Holy Spirit, is to settle for a dangerously inadequate picture, which ultimately diminishes God and robs him of his full power. It is only when we recognise that God's love Throw through the Father, within us through the Son, and from us through the Holy Spirit, that we begin to glimpse the wonder of who God is and all he can do. Amen. The reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 25 to 27. I've told you this while I am still with you. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and to make you remember all that I have told you. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Amen.
So today is Trinity Sunday. It's always the Sunday that comes after Pentecost, which we celebrated last week. You may say to me that you've never heard of Trinity Sunday before, but I can tell you that it rolls round with regularity every year, just after Pentecost. And if you were in church last Sunday, then you would have heard a story about the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, enabling them to go out and do all sorts of things that they didn't think they could do. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, do miracles because the Holy Spirit gave them the power to do so. So what is Trinity Sunday? It is the Sunday when we think of God the three in one and one in three. And if you think that I'm talking in rid riddles, then let me try and explain to you what Trinity Sunday is. If we were to draw a picture of God, I wonder what we would draw. I asked a group of young people to do this in a church that I had um, many years ago. And uh, I was particularly struck by two of the drawings. Now one, um, uh, one of these young people drew a picture of an old man with a long beard in the sky. That was her picture of what God was like. But another young person drew a picture of a computer. And when I asked him why he'd done that, he said to me that God is like a computer because he networks with everybody. He communicates with all people, which I thought was a very interesting answer. If I was to ask you now to draw a picture of God, I wonder what you would do, what you would come up with. But don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do that. So how can God be three things and one thing at the same time? Well, first of all, uh, I want you to think about the Queen. She is a, a wonderful lady who has led our country now for 67 years, I believe. The Queen is a mother, a grandmother. Until recently, she was a wife. Then she lost the Duke of Edinburgh, so she's now a widow. She has been a daughter and she was a sister. She is head of state. She is the leader of the Commonwealth. She is a corgi lover and a horse rider. Those are just some of the things that our Queen is. She is one person and yet she does all these different things. They all are attributes that she has. But to us, she is Queen Elizabeth II. If we look at God, we can think of him in three ways. First of all, there is God the Father, the creator of the world, the one who made the mountains and the hills, the rivers and the streams, the one that brought us into being, along with the animals, the birds and the flowers. So that's God the Father. Then you've got God the Son, Jesus, who came into the world to heal the sick, to teach the people about God's love, to help the poor, the downcast, people who really needed to know about the love of God. And then there is God, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God's messenger and also the one who enables to do things when we think we can't. Sometimes we're given a task to do and we might think, oh, there's no way I can do that. But if we pray about it and we ask for the Holy Spirit to help us, it is the, the power that comes from the Holy Spirit that enables us to do things that we didn't think we were capable of doing. In our reading from John's Gospel, Jesus was speaking. He was talking about God's love and that when he, Jesus, went back to heaven, that God would send the Holy Spirit so that the disciples would not be alone they would be able to continue the work that Jesus had started. 
So all three are mentioned in that short reading, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And God, of course, doesn't abandon us. He never abandons us. He stays with us in all the trials and tribulations that we go through in life. Often he's present with us in the form of the Holy Spirit. Think about an egg for the moment. There are three parts to an egg. First of all, there is the shell, that's the, the outer part. And then if we crack the egg open, there is the egg white and there is the yolk. Now, all three parts make up the egg, but they can all be used separately. If you want to make meringues, then you whisk the egg white only. And uh, if you add sugar and then cook it, you will have meringue. If you want to make a cheese sauce, you use the egg yolk, not the white part, and you can make a, a cheese sauce. The egg shell can be thrown on the compost heap and uh, is, is used to uh, de decompose so that it can go on the garden as a kind of fertiliser. And yet an egg is one thing and yet it's three. There are three parts to it and yet it is one. In sign language, the, um, the way that deaf people would uh, uh, sign the Trinity is they would say three in one or one in three. So we're thinking about God as three persons today, God, the Holy Spirit, God uh, in Jesus, his son, and God as father. Sometimes when we pray, we begin loving Father or Father God. Or we might say Lord Jesus Christ and then say our prayer. Or sometimes we say Holy Spirit. And that's usually when we want the Holy Spirit to help us to understand something or to do something. We're going to pray now and we're going to use that format for our prayers. We're going to pray to God the Father, to Jesus his Son, and through the Holy Spirit. We're going to share now in our prayers of intercession. This is prayers for others as well as for ourselves. Creator God, we praise you for your awe-inspiring majesty and thank you for the riches and beauty of creation, inspired and brought to being by your love. We pray for the world, sharing our concerns for countries where there is war, for countries where there is conflict and unrest. And in our prayers today, we remember the people of Israel and Palestine who have differences at this time and we pray for a peaceful way forward. We pray for areas suffering from natural disaster, for famine or for disease. And in our prayers today, remember the people of India who are suffering so much with the coronavirus. Creator God, guide the nations and their leaders with your love and mercy. Creator, Saviour and Holy Spirit, Hear our, our prayers. O oh, Saviour God, we praise you for your deep and indestructible love and thank you for coming to share our human life with us so that we might share the joys of eternal life with you. We pray for those needing to feel your touch upon their lives because they seek comfort, healing, forgiveness or strength. O oh, God, we pray for people who know, we know who are ill, who are sorrowful, who are anxious, and who are going through hospital treatments. O oh, Saviour God, soothe the lives of those who suffer with your love and mercy. Creator, Saviour, and Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Spirit of God, we praise you for your amazing life-changing power and thank you for the love that makes and shapes the church, filling your people with a joyful need to worship and serve. 
we pray for your church throughout the world, asking that we might uphold one another in times of difficulty and learn from one another's example and discoveries. We pray for church communities anxious about their future, challenged by the needs around them, seeking to mend broken relationships, embarking on new projects. Spirit of God, bless the life of your church with your love and mercy. Creator, Saviour and Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Amen. Amen. your continued giving to the life of the church, whether through um, direct debit or a banking order, however you make your uh, donation to the church, even in the collection on a Sunday in the offertory, we're very grateful um, as it means the work of the church can continue. So I'm going to pray and thank God for your gifts. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the generosity that you have given to us. We thank you that you shared your life with us to give us forgiveness and to enable us to find the way to heaven. Accept the gifts that we give and the spirit in which they are given. Receive our gratitude. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The prayers throughout our service today have been Trinitarian. You may have noticed that sometimes it was Father, Son and Holy Spirit mentioned within the prayers. And we're going to finish now with a Trinitarian uh, blessing. The, the amazing, amazing grace of, of the, the Master, Master Jesus Christ, Christ the, the extravagant love of God, God and, the and the intimate, intimate friendship of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with, with all of you. you. Amen. Amen.